you know, when we got that request to uh, really take a deep dive on the whole Marfa Lights thing, it's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. It's a classic. It totally is. I feel like we're stepping right into like an X-Files episode, right? You know? Yeah. It's just one of those things out there, unexplained, especially out in the desert. Mm. And just gets to you, you know? It's true. And it's not like it's a new thing either. This is something that's been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. Way before we were even a thought. Right. Like yeah. centuries of people talking about this. So, okay, before we get into like all the what they could be in the theories, yeah, let's actually paint a picture for people who maybe haven't been to Marfa because it's kind of its own character in this whole story. Mm -hmm. It's West Texas, right? Yeah. Miles from anything resembling a big city. Yeah. And you're surrounded by this like stark almost alien beauty. It really does feel otherworldly when you're out there. Right. Like even just the landscape itself is kind of a mystery. Oh, definitely. And then Marfa itself is this like artsy, almost bohemian town. But there's this like undercurrent of something different. Well, you think about it, it's like an oasis out there. So it makes sense that you have these artists and people looking for inspiration drawn to that kind of environment, that big open sky, the desert, the history. It really blurs the line between what's normal and what's not. Okay, see, now I'm getting chills just thinking about it. So you're out there, right? It's a clear. Night stars are just blazing above you. And then on the horizon, these flickering lights. The Marfa lights. Yeah. So what are people actually seeing? Like, give us the rundown. Well, some people say they look like orbs. Others say it's more like these dancing flames. Some even say they change color. Oh, wow. But the one thing everyone seems to agree on is that there's something special about them. Yeah, you know, I was looking at some eyewitness accounts before this, and some people are like faint flickering lights. Other people are like full-on glowing orbs moving around like with a purpose. Some people even said that they interact with each other. It's definitely one of those things where the more you read, the more you wonder if everyone's really seeing the same thing. You know, our brains are hardwired to find patterns. So when you're out there in the middle of the desert under all those stars, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and let your imagination take over. I can totally see that. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? These sightings, they go back, like, way back. Even before Marfa was really a town. Oh, yeah. Like 19th century settlers, ranchers, even Native American tribes. So this isn't just like some modern thing. It really makes you think about all the people who have looked up at that same sky and seen those same lights. It's like this direct connection to the past. And it's not just stories and legends either. Like the Texas legislature made it official in 2003. The Marfa lights are a recognized phenomenon. Which is kind of amazing when you think about it. Even with all our technology and science, we're still drawn to these mysteries, these things that we can't qu quite explain. That's so true. It's like this little reminder that we don't know everything. Okay, so we've got this mystery on our hands, right? Centuries in the making, officially recognized. But what are they? Like, let's get down to the nuts and bolts of it and talk about some explanations. And I guess we should probably start with the more like down-to-earth ones. Yeah, I mean, Occam's razor, right. The simplest explanation is usually the best place to start. Right. And in this case, one of the simplest explanations is just car headlights. Car headlights? Really? Yeah. Think about it. You're talking about a really remote area. Marfa's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It is true. So even headlights from miles away on Highway 67 could end up looking pretty strange on the horizon. I guess that makes sense. But what about the mirages? I read something about mirages being a possible explanation. Ah, yes, the mirages. That's where things get a little more interesting. Right. It's not just car headlights anymore. Exactly. And the science behind it is actually pretty cool. Okay, so how do mirages play into this? Well, basically, you've got the desert air, right? Mm. And it cools down really fast at night. And when that happens, it creates these layers of air with different temperatures. Yeah. So you've got this layer of cold, dense air near the ground. And then above that, you've got warmer air. Like a layer cake of air. Exactly. And just like light bends when it goes through water. It can bend when it goes to these different layers of air. Oh, wow. So that's how mirages work. Yep. And that bending of light can make objects that are actually below the horizon appear above it. So you're telling me those dancing lights that people are seeing could just be car headlights being all distorted? It's definitely a possibility, mm. especially when you factor in the distances involved and the fact that it's pitch black out there at night. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Okay, so we've got car headlights. We've got mirages. Mm. Were there any other, like, natural explanations that we found? I think I remember reading something about bioluminescent gases. Ah, uh, yes, the bioluminescent gases. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? It totally does. But it's not as far-fetched as you might think. All right. Well, it's definitely a long shot. But there are certain types of fungi and bacteria that can actually emit light. Oh, wow. 
I didn't know that. Yeah, it's called bioluminescence. So you're saying it's possible that there's like glowing stuff out there in the desert? It's possible. I mean, maybe not glowing stuff exactly, but gases released from decaying plant matter could potentially create some kind of light effect. Okay, so we've covered some of the more grounded explanations. Car headlights, mirages, maybe even some glowing gases. But what about the sightings that don't really fit with any of that? The ones that are like a little bit too strange to be explained by normal stuff. Well, that's where things start to get really interesting. Okay, so we've got all these like normal explanations, right? Car headlights, mirages, even the glowing fungus thing. But now let's get to the fun stuff. What about the people who think these lights are like ghosts or something? Ah, yes, the ghost stories. You can't talk about the Marfa lights without talking about the ghosts. Right, like it just seems to go hand in hand. It makes sense, though, when you think about it. You've got this vast, empty landscape. Centuries of history people living and dying out there. Yeah, and it's not just any history either. You've got Native American stories. You've got... Spanish conquistadors, cowboys. It's like all these different layers of the past just kind of blending together. It really makes you wonder if some of that energy is still out there, you know. And that's what makes those ghost stories so powerful. It's not just about being scared or anything. It's about connecting with something bigger than ourselves, something we don't fully understand. Okay, well, how about we go from ghosts to aliens? Because I know there are plenty of people who think the Marfa lights are UFOs. Oh, yeah, the UFO crowd loves the Marfa lights. And it's not that hard to see why, right? I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Right. No light pollution or anything. Perfect conditions for spotting something strange in the sky. Plus, there's already a history of UFO sightings in that area. Exactly. So it's like all the ingredients are there for a good UFO story. Okay. But even if it's not aliens, what about the possibility of secret government stuff? Ah, uh, yes, the good old government conspiracy. Because that's got to be on the table, right? Uh, well, it wouldn't be a mystery without a little government intrigue. Right. And there are military bases out there, testing ranges, all that kind of stuff. And the government has been known to do some pretty weird stuff out in the desert. That's for sure. So, okay, <laughs> let's say someone is listening to all this and they're like, I need to see these Marfa lights for myself. What advice would you give them? Well, first things first, timing is everything. You want to go on a clear night, ideally when there's no moon. No moon, okay. Yeah, that way there's less light pollution. And you get a really good view of the stars, too. That makes sense. And as far as where to go, there are a few options. Okay, lay it on us. The classic spot is the Marfa Lights Viewing Center. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. It's a good option if you want something, like, official and easy to find. Right. But if you're feeling a little more adventurous... Adventurous. You could always try your luck out on Highway 67. Highway 67. Okay. Or Mitchell Flat. Ooh. Mitchell Flat. That sounds mysterious. It's a bit off the beaten path, but definitely worth checking out. And if you really want to up the ante... Oh, there's more. Try Ranch Road 2810. Okay, now you're just trying to get me lost in the desert. <laughs> it's just a little. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, it's supposed to be a great spot for seeing the lights. And hey, if you're really into it, you could always time your trip with the Marfa Lights Festival. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. It's a whole celebration of the lights, music, art, food. It's a good time. So it's like a party for the Marfa Lights. Basically. That's awesome. So we've covered a lot of ground here. We've talked about the history, the explanations, the best places to see them. But I guess the biggest question is, what does it all mean? What's the takeaway from all this? You know, that's a tough one. I think for me, it's a reminder that there are still mysteries out there, things we may never fully understand. And that's okay. Exactly. It's okay to not know everything. Sometimes it's more fun to just embrace the mystery. That's a good point. It's like we spend so much time trying to figure everything out oh, that we forget good. to just enjoy the ride. Exactly. So yeah, maybe the Marfa lights are just car headlights or mirages. Or maybe there's something more. Who knows? But either way, they make you stop and think. They make you wonder. And isn't that what it's all about? Yeah, I think you're right. Well, on that note, I think we're going to have to wrap things up here. But thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the Marfa Lights. It's been a wild ride. It always is. Until next time, keep looking up at the sky. <sighs> and never stop asking questions. <laughs>